What is the good? Edge of my seat. Debated on to go chair spin, no chair spin. <laughs> Went with the chair spin. That's why you got to be watching on YouTube, kids. Uh, now I can't find my headphone cord. <laughs> Definitely should have gone. I'm back. Chair spin. You were always here. I was always here. I knew I was here. I just couldn't hear. All right, so we're back again. This is kind of the last vid standalone video from the original non-Superflex tight end premium mock we did a few weeks ago, if you've been following along. Finally. If you haven't been, uh, we've run through the mock itself, and then we've recorded several standalone videos, uh, including when to take Najee Harris, the rankings of those sophomore running back tiers, excluding uh, Jonathan Taylor, because we got a lot of questions about that, and he was just Why is Taylor, ahead of those Taylor guys. a part of this discussion? Because right. uh, he's the best. Uh, where and when to take uh, the tight ends, and now but not least... Now, but not least, right? <laughs> the uh, we're going to talk about the last big tier of RBs before the dry zone. That was your cue. You wanted to, that was a cue for me to hit right. the button. Right, J the last Jason's, year. Jason's got all sorts of new things that he's and we're back. Just so excited about. So I could do the whole edit from here. I don't have to spend any time after this show if I nail it. Unless I don't nail it. You better nail it. Better nail it. Uh, so if you're not really familiar with what the dry zone in the, the running backs go sparse, you know, out there after this particular juncture that we're about to talk about. And it gets hard for, you know, some strong running back help after that. So today we're basically going to pick up in the third round of this mock and talk about which one of these last remaining big tier of RBs we would take and where and over whom. Um, these RBs are going to be Aaron Jones, Travis Etienne, Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Javante Williams, and Miles Sanders. Uh, so it's kind of they're all they're all pretty close in a round here. Too closely. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna we're gonna plow through that and then and kind of say who we would and where and then do a little ranking of them at the end. So we're not trying to get too caught up in that as we go through it and then a little more depth at the end there. Um, so Jay Wayne, how you doing today? I'm doing swell, Casey. I'm doing I'm doing swell. That's good. Nobody ever asked me how I'm doing, so I'm doing just fine. I'm Casey Myers. I'm your host. How you doing? You can find me on Twitter at IMC Myers. <laughs> uh, I always get I asked, but go how he's doing. I asked Jason. Nobody ever comes back and says, hey, Casey, how's it going today? How you doing? Everything all right? You know? No. Yeah, everything's fine. How's the house Reno going? It's it's not great. Yeah. It's, uh, I've been, been through it. I've I didn't do digging, it myself. I've like been digging uh, footers underneath my house, and we got a crazy rainstorm, and I've dug Oof. 26 holes underneath my house, and the rainstorm basically caved all the... Uh, basically, it wasn't a rainstorm. It was a tropical storm. It was a hurricane. <laughs> came through over us. The and, eye uh, came over us. Caved in 26 holes, because two of them are outside. There's 28 total. Um, and so I had to go under there again today in much muddier uh, conditions and redig some holes. So, so you were feeling great to be on the mics tonight. That was a bummer. We're tired. Um, and, you know, <laughs> hopefully we can get some concrete in there before this happens again. I don't think we'll get any rain. That was like crazy five, five inches of rain in, in a few minutes or in a few hours. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again. But I'm doing swell. I'm here ready to talk about this. Uh, no big co like I mentioned again tonight. Uh, but bye some bye. things that we have coming up. We have a super flex mock to break down next. Um, as well as live mocks every Thursday. So be sure to subscribe on the YouTubes there. Um, and then for these live mocks, you can go ahead and follow us at the FF Dynasty on the Twitter. Um, be sure You can be on the lookout on Thursdays at 8.30 to 8.45 for a sleeper link. We've got 30 seconds per pick, uh, 12 to 14 rounds. They move pretty quick, usually like 40 minutes. Uh, we're in and out. So we give patrons, you know, they're sometimes, you know, they've been, they've been rocking with us, but you know, sometimes they get a little tired of it and we're you know, mocked, so we'll, they're mocked out. We'll throw, uh, we'll, them we'll out. throw it out to the public. So follow along and look out Thursdays at around eight thirty, eight forty five, and you can grab a couple spots. We switch it up to super flex to dynasty. We'll be doing redraft soon. So check that out. Uh, or you can just watch us live uh, while we do that. So without further ado, you ready to get into this thing? Let's do it. Should we take it to the draft board? Let's bring it up. I, I just know, did. I know you know you got all your buttons, and you already had to make a cut that I know of, so you didn't quite nail it. You're ah. gonna have to post it. But see, it's so hard to talk correctly <laughs> on these on these mics. Yeah. All right. So we're in the draft here. We got the board up. 
We're going to pick up, like I said, in the third round. Uh, if we just backtrack a little bit, you know, two nine, the two or two seven, the two tight ends go Kittle and Pitts. Um, this is tight end premium again, like I said, non super flex. Michael Thomas goes at two nine, Kelsey goes two ten, Henry goes two eleven, and Ridley goes uh, two twelve. Hawkinson and Waller then go three one and three two, and here we are at the tier that we're going to talk about: Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon. The next two off the board at three three and three four. So. I mean, I think it's safe to say that we're pretty much moving Hawkinson out of this range of guys. We're going to, I think, for the most part, put him behind all of these guys. Is that safe to assume? I can't I can't take Hawkinson over these running backs, I don't think. Okay. Even inside in premium. But Darren Waller, I'm fine with. And pretty sure. much all of the guys in front of those, I'm not going to argue with you too hard about it. Michael Thomas, I think, is is a fine pick there. Calvin Ridley has, has shown that he deserves to be up there. Um as much as I have a hard time pulling the trigger on Calvin Ridley, somebody's probably going to do it, and I and I get it. I get it for sure. Yeah, how can you not take Calvin Ridley uh, once a lot of those, you know, I, once those tight ends are gone and those top tier running backs are gone? I mean, I'm not that into taking a wide receiver, but Calvin Ridley's a beast and definitely deserves that average draft position. I, I agree. Those are um, facts. Those are facts. Straight facts, homie. That's what we do over here. This is a straight facts edition. We never lie. All truth. And attainment. We're also never scared. Never. <laughs> Cue the bone crusher. I don't know. During that hurricane, there was lightning struck right there and thunder hit right there. And it was, I was scared. I was like, oh, no. How did he go from it there It wasn't a hurricane. It was a trop storm. It, it, it degraded. It was a it trop stormy. It regressed to the mean of <laughs> tropical Troppy stormy. <laughs> That's terrible. I it was it. in the middle of the night. So I love it. It was from 1.30 to 3 a.m. It was, was the longest the time. thunder roll. I heard like a 20-minute thunder roll. I was thinking time. about the song. I was yeah. like, damn, this, like, that's this where is, he got this, this from. This is long. This is lengthy. <laughs> this is how the thunder rolls. This is lengthy. All right. So Darren Waller then, you know, I'm fine with that. Yes, Darren Waller. I'm fine with all those tight ends and tight end premium going before this next group of guys goes off the board. Uh, any uh, disagreement? Nah, I mean, Darren Waller's like a top... 10, 15 scoring player in tight end premium. Yeah, I mean, tight end premium, He's he was wide receiver three last year. I so. don't have the straight facts on that one. That's straight facts, homie. <laughs> you ain't never lie. Yeah, it's got to be good, though. It's got to be top. Who top. Was it Abraham Lincoln or who didn't lie? Is it Abraham? Honest Abe, yeah. yeah. Just call me Abe. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So then we there there is we have Aaron Jones here at three three and three four, but I wanted to address three five and three six before we really get rolling. So here. don't hit the button. You don't have to hit the button just yet. All right, I'll hold off. You don't want to have more post work. Yeah, um, Yo, I can't believe you told him about the cut. <laughs> I like to disguise hey, this is, so maybe you won't this notice. Is straight facts. We keep it real over <laughs> here. One hundred. <laughs> Come get it. Yeah, um, well, if I kept it real, I wouldn't have cut it at all. So CD, it. CD Lamb and Diggs go in this tier here, and nine times out of ten, they're going to go earlier than this. I just wanted to hit that real quick. Uh, when we draft with the patrons, which most of these guys that we're drafting are, it gets running back heavy for sure. Um, so CD Lamb and Diggs you know, kind of fell down the board a little bit. I, I personally, I, I would probably take CD Lamb and Diggs um, over you know, pretty much all of these running backs that we're about to discuss here in this last tier, and I don't... You know, I don't really feel obviously it depends on how my draft board played out and, and everything. And that's, you know, pivotal of everything. That's why it's so hard to, quote unquote, rank these guys, because it's just, you know, where do people fall and how is your draft board being built and who got gifted into your hands? Sometimes you get A.J. Brown gifted right into your hands. And, and you know, maybe I'm maybe I want another running back because I, I missed on one. So maybe I would skip over digs for, you know, a guy that I felt the most strongly out of this group for. But for the most part, I'm going to I'm going to exclude uh, digs and lamb from this conversation in this tier of when and where I would probably I would definitely take digs over all these guys i think agreed i could i could take a i'll i'll save it but i could take one of these guys over here i i could i could probably do i right. could probably do so over we'll land. get there over yeah all Keep right so straight. aaron jones the first one off the board in this thing. ah like a little photo a little name a little 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 jargon for you what Boom. do you got little button don't yeah. have to add it he's ready to go so aaron jones gets drafted three three here Probably not going to do that for me personally here. It's it's ridiculous. The guy has been it's fantastic. Ridiculous. I mean, but with with the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, he's probably coming back for a year. Do you want to draft one of the oldest running backs in this tier with the 
question mark of Aaron Rodgers for maybe just a year? No. Probably not. Not so, right now. So for me, I'm going to move him down the line here with these running backs. Is that Yeah. Is that fair? We're not right. ranking him yet, but I think no, we got to we're going to we're I'm not going to take him, him at 3-3 three, three here. We would we would take somebody else. I think that yes, I would have to take a few more guys. I mean, Yeah, agreed. So, you know, they they have a potential out with his contract in 23 with six and a half million dead. So he's there for two more years, 21 and 22 for sure, and probably 23 yeah, unless I mean, he six, falls off a cliff. Right. And there is like the potential in this offense, right? It's like Kyle, Matt, LaFleur, Shanahan running the, the, the sure. sticks over there, right? And but the, the whole Aaron Rodgers is the key, and can he survive without Aaron Rodgers? Right. And he can survive, but it won't be like fifteen touchdown plus upside. Right. Is it quite as good as as maybe some of these other situations? And like you know, may, maybe when you really talk about it like that, I mean, maybe some of these guys' situations are are maybe then kind of similar to Aaron Jones's without. Aaron Rodgers being the leader of the Packers and, and some of these other guys whose teams they do have and the quarterbacks that they do have uh, maybe evens that playing field a little bit more and then he's he's maybe the oldest out of most of these guys so it's just he's definitely just he's, makes he's it 26 will be 27 de- in December it makes it a little tough for him to be the first one out of the gate so of this tier right so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's a big no for me at 3-3 I would I would do something else there um and like I said, we'll rank these at the end. So then we'll move on to Joe Mixon here at 3-4. Fine with that. Joe Mixon? Let's yeah. pull. What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> I'm fine with taking Joe Mixon here at this particular juncture. If, if that's if that's what your heart desires, I would probably, I think it's, you know, we're, we're, I know I know you're going to share similar sentiment. And when we were talking about C.D. Lamb, this is the player that you would have over him. I'm probably going to take Travis Etienne over all these guys. I know. I know we're going to save the ranking for the end. You just jump to it. I, I know, but I'm yes, just. Yes, I'll take Etienne over Lamb. But I, you know, I said I was fine with mixing here, but I wanted to clarify that I, you know, I, I still, would, yes. I would feel. I want Etienne over all these running backs. Right. I, I, and that's I think not I'm just pretty I have much a there Clemson, with you. Uh, uh, mouse pad. That's I think not I'm pretty much there with you on this. He one. agrees, so that, that 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 should tell you. But I'm okay with the Joe Mixon pick here. Um, at three four, I'm I'm not mad at it. I w- I would have to take ETN, but no. I mean, I saw some stupid. For some reason, Twitter showed me some stupid tweet today, and it was about a quote tweet of if Mixon gets cut, then uh, the uh, Evans is gonna be the new James Robinson or something. And I'm like, if Mixon gets cut, like there's no way Mixon gets cut. Like he's he's paid. Like they they do have a potential out next year. Mm-hmm. But it's, it'll be eight and a half million dead, and the Bengals don't lose money. Yeah, they don't I, spend money. They're not going. I don't think Mixon's going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. But Burrow's not going anywhere. Right. The only question mark is the injury history. He did miss ten games last year with a foot injury, mm-hmm. and he always seems to be dealing with something. He's only played sixteen games once in his four year career, so that is a concern. That's Certainly. why he's not yet what we have wanted him to be. Right. And that's a little dejecting, but. He's still right there. He's been okay when playing. And I think they even like faked they, they waited to take him out last year. They should have all even pulled him even sooner. So you were like scratching your head wondering about whether I should play Joe Mixon or not. For a couple of weeks. Kind of kept it vague. Too late. Right. Yep. Vagua. <laughs> That's what they do. Uh, but uh, you know, they made some upgrades to the offensive line. They got they got Jonah Williams holding down a left tackle. Finally had a decent year in 2020. They upgrade the right tackle spot, bringing in Riley Reef on a one-year deal. They took Clemson left tackle Jackson Carmen with the 46 overall pick. Um, they did pass on Sewell to take Chase, but that's still a bonus in some regard for, uh, for Joe Mixon. Uh, they got their center returning and a couple more stabs in, in the later rounds of the draft. So they're trying on the offensive line. They didn't take Sewell, but they took Chase. But they're, they've been making improvements that offense should be good, and he's going to get all the work. Like, I can't be mad at taking Joe Mixon. Like, I'm down to put Joe Mixon on the squad, and he might even be a little cheap. Yeah, well, it's just it's, it's, it's that there's just all the, a lot of question marks that you just named off there, and the people have been wanting to be on him and, and went all in on him, and, and it hasn't quite panned out. So now he's back here with these guys, whereas he was maybe a back end of the first round guy last year. 
uh, that that you were kind of saying I should should get all the work and and he's young and good. So here we are again because of of some of those things that you mentioned. But let's save a little bit of meat on the bone for the ranking at the end here. All right. Um, so we're we're basically okay with ETN. We're okay with mixing here. No problems with those guys in the order that they were taken. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, skip right over the digs in the CD lamb here. And we're going to move right on to Austin Eckler. I, well, Travis Etienne goes at three, seven and we're, we know we're okay with that because we were okay with taking him. You got to throw the graphic up though. We were okay there he is with in a Jags uniform. Huh? <laughs> we were okay <laughs> with taking him at the beginning of this third round here. 22 youngest of all these dudes, uh, or at least the beginning of this tier discussion here. Um, so we'll save that. We'll save some Travis ET talk. I mean, it really, there's not, not much to save. Like I, I, I just, I just want Travis Etienne. Yeah, just, those are straight facts. Right, right. just He's give me the, the guy. most talented guy on this right. list. Let me get that. Uh, but we'll 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 wait a minute. Probably the most humble. Um, so then we got Austin Eckler here at three eight. So there you go, another this, another photo of a player these, for your pleasure. <laughs> these three guys just kind of all <laughs> fell into kind of how I feel about the tier without giving away too much, obviously, or by the time we're mm, done we with this, we're, we're basically going to be pretty well sought after on the ranking. But I wanted to go through it one by one as at the end here. Uh, but I, I feel fine with Austin Eckler there. I think he should be the next player that you take off the board. Let's, let's bring it back up where are we um, at here with, with the remaining players. I like, I like that. Um, you would take, well, we'll save it for the rankings, but I'm surprised you don't have another guy up over these guys, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll save it. Yeah. So I there goes Patrick Mahomes. I'm not going to be, I'm not, we're not going to even discuss that. That was, we talked about that on the, on the main show. Uh, that we did off of this so some topics over there then here comes David Montgomery and then right behind him are two more wide receivers so this is where this conversation might get a little interesting there's Jamar Chase here and New Hopkins so Jamar Chase if you want I, I'm, I can't argue if you wanted to say you wanted to take Jamar Chase before all of these guys wouldn't argue with you mm -mm. would you no, because I don't think that I would trade. I mean, other than Travis Etienne, who we've already talked about on this show at, at nauseum, saying that we would take J Travis Etienne one two in a rookie draft that's non super flex, right? Even if it's tight end premium, we're both on board taking Etienne. I know, I know, Big Co would, was probably going to be in taking Camp Pitts. Jamar Chase here as the as the, in in front of Etn, regardless of where Pitts goes. We were in Just, a draft with Big Co trying to trade up to take Etn before Pitts had gone off the board, but I do think Big Co would be fine taking Chase, and I can't really argue with you, right? But I, my preference uh, is to take is to take uh, Travis Etn. But once Travis Etn is gone and Diggs is gone, I'm not gonna be mad if you want to take Chase over Lamb. I'm not gonna be mad if you want to take. Chase, Chase over any of these running backs over that all we these just running took. Backs. It's right. just with it gets it come again. The, the 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 big factor here is is like we're about to run out of running backs, right? Um, so it's basically comes down to positional scarcity and how has your draft gone before this? What kind of running back situation are you in? Are you okay? You want to play the zero RB? You want to do this? You how you want to play it? You want to kind of get one workhorse and then figure it out, take some stabs later. We kind of discussed that in multiple uh, different drafts that we've done. Uh, throughout here so i don't want to spend too much time on this episode necessarily talking about that um but it is you know it it, it does become really tough like jamar chase probably talent wise and and value and player wise in the eyes of people is is going to be good and and strong and and he's not an, a middle-aged running back that's 26 or 27 which people get scared of you know a lot of people go to college for seven years and and he's probably going to be great. There certainly is still a bust potential, whereas you know most of these other guys we're talking about, we've at least seen him play and succeed in the NFL. We think that Jamar Chase is is you know he's going to be just fine. He's going like, to be just fine. I feel fine. great about Jamar Chase. But there always has to be a little bit of doubt there. But I mean, if you again, if you wanted to say, hey, I, I got to take him in front of all these running backs, and then I'll figure it out. You know, I'm not really going to argue with you too much. There's, there's, a, I've, I've won this game playing a multitude of different ways, and what you just really need to mostly be trying to do is zigging while others are zagging, or zagging while others are zigging. Like if everybody's going, if it, if it was a a, a zero RB year, then robust RB it up, man. You got to zoom be, zoom when others are boom booming. Yeah, it's it's that's the, that's what you got to do. If 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 all the running backs are flying off the board. Maybe you have to get yourself one of them, but then, you know, you can load up on, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're such an idiot for only taking these <laughs> wide receivers. Like you got to kind of take what the board gives you. And there are certain times where you 
may get pushed into having to do something a little sooner than you might want to. Uh, but, but sometimes you might just say, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm going to do me and, and just go ahead and take the best value here, even though maybe I'm going to miss out on this section of running backs. You know, it's just so many of these dudes could just lose value in a year. A fair amount of them could easily, I could see not being any higherly rated than they are right now. Jamar Chase, there's very little chance he is a higher value next year. Like, all he has to do is like a little bit of something. Agreed. He has to do a little bit of something and he would maybe be, uh, you know, at the same place. Probably not any higher. But even if he does lose a few positions... He still has a long amount of time to Before. regain those positions. Right. And, 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 and whereas almost any of these running backs left, with the exception of maybe Travis Etienne, and David Montgomery's still fairly young, and Joe Mixon isn't overly old, but like Jamar Chase is just in a different category where that he has plenty of time to you know, gain that value back. Um, Big time. So, and if he plays well, right. if he does good... Right, I mean, it's going to be astronomical increase from this, AJ Brown uh, and DK Metcalf and Justin third. Jefferson are all up here in the tops after you know after some some a very short amount of time in the NFL um, and CD Lamb's you know kind of hanging out right there. And I think so. that Chase, besides DK Metcalf and, and maybe I think Chase is on like AJ Brown's level of beastliness and like maybe better. He might be. He's probably a better prospect than AJ Brown. Like he's a fantastic, like I don't, there's not too many people that I feel like real good about. Right. I probably got to take the running back, but I could, I mean, I could take chase. I I could, I could take, I I wouldn't trade chase for like David Montgomery. You know, I wouldn't trade chase for probably not for Austin Eckler. Mm -mm. I would, I would not trade him for Aaron Jones. Right. So, I mean, that by process of elimination, We're mixing. Yeah, let's, you're putting them up front, but yeah. then it comes down to, you know, the positional scarcity thing can help elevate, you know, running back stock, which, you know, that's really the long and the short of it always is, is when you're in season, everybody's looking for a running back. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, the value just is, is always very solid. Got to hope to like get one in a rookie draft who's really good, you know, right. if he can make right. it through a year. All right, so David Montgomery goes 310. We're basically saying Jamar Chase, you could take him above all these guys and and nobody's going to be upset. I don't I, I don't I don't I don't feel like that's a, the wrong answer at all. Jamar Chase could easily go in front of these guys and uh, you know, probably should. Mm-hmm. Um, so then Nuke, who's the aging player kind of in here in this it right mushed in between these running backs whereas maybe Nuke in at his what 28 year old season here or heading heading into 29 i think he's gonna be 29 at some um, point soon if he isn't already you know where you know maybe an air like probably doesn't have much more time than aaron jones in his prime left like probably almost on the same level of sure. time where people still have some value on on their name even though you know i'm not saying that nuke will just be dead after two or three years he could be you know he could play for as long as he feels like playing and his body allows him to play and how much he wants to take care of himself he could be like a larry fitzgerald who was very startable into his mid to for sure to his mid 30s he certainly could be cuz he he doesn't win necessarily on crazy athleticism and there's no question about his quarterback situation either right so but with that being said probably in most cases how i kind of came to be with this decision is that when i get on the board at this position in the draft i typically don't even click over to the wide receiver <laughs> area be, because you know yeah if jamar chase is there yeah I, but I'm, I'm i've monitored that so i know that he's there or not there but if i know nukes there like i probably don't even click over to the wide receiver tab i'm gonna just grab one of these other running backs and that's could be stupid and you could say you're an idiot and he scored a ton of points and he usually scores a lot of points um, yeah i think but, i would i think i would take him like right after chase so like i feel better about nuke than a lot of these guys for the next three years, I think. I would, I would basically, I would, I'm fine. If you want to say, hey, I'll, I'll take Nuke over Miles Sanders, I think Nuke, where he went in this draft, is, is properly uh, rated here. If you wanted to say you're going to take Nuke over, over Miles, I could take him over Montgomery fine. and Eckler too. 
I'm probably taking I'm taking Aaron I'm Jones. taking Aaron Jones, Mixon, ETN, Eckler, David Montgomery all over DeAndre Hopkins. I do love Clemson Tigers, but it just feels like he's going to score as many points as those guys and have probably a longevity. So. Maybe more. Them. Right. Maybe more, but positional scarcity. I'm going to go ahead and get that running back. All right. Um, and then if you want to say Miles Sanders, probably so. <clears throat> Javante <clears throat> Williams. Nuke. People people could elevate Javante Williams in the front of this for me personally. Uh, probably a little closer to the back end here. Um, and then Josh Jacobs, um, you know, uh, I'm fine with taking Nuke in front of, you know, pretty much all of those guys. Josh Jacobs is the one that gives me a little bit of pause. Um, but what are your thoughts? You pretty on, much already said that on, you're on Nuke over Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't gotten to the rankings yet, so yeah. I don't. Which is I where would, we're about to get to. I would have Jacobs higher than where he went in this draft mm -hmm. for sure. Let's see his player card. We've skipped sure. over some other guys. I don't even well, know we'll get back to him. It was don't wasted worry. time. He was his Josh Jacobs photo and stats for there you. There he is. Straight facts on that screen. There's nothing, nothing but straight facts. <laughs> Third most in attempts last year. You that's, know? that's it. well. Let's let, let me let's jump right into the rankings then. So we'll just three ten was Montgomery, three eleven was Chase. We talked about that. We just talked about Nuke. Then Miles Sanders four one, uh, Jamal Williams uh, or Javante Williams at four two, and then Josh Jacobs goes at four three. And now you know we're we're basically done with this last kind of big tier. And then you have Kareem Hunt and Chris Carson who basically habitually always go last. They should. Oh God bless you. So, and, and I think, I think that's fair. And so that we're not going to necessarily include them in this group conversation. Cause they're pretty much always last where I feel like these guys, the other guys are a little more jumbled up. Yeah. I would so have you have two more shots at, at a running back here after um, this tier, right? It's the second to last, but they're pretty tier. much all, almost always go in the next round. Right. So, and we've kind of talked in the main draft about where we would, which receivers and drop off we receivers would take over I would take. Kareem Hunt or Chris Carson. So we've right. kind of covered those bases already. So go back and watch the original mock. Um, so let's get into the rankings here. We've basically said that we'll take ET first. Both of us are on board with that. Mm. Last big tier. Straight facts. Running backs here. Just keeping it real. ET in all day. They'd avoid the hate. My man is special. He, I, I, I truly do think he's special. If you want to be mad about the landing spot in Jacksonville and that there is, I'm not hating on James Robinson, that, there, card it, that there is a good player there. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not going to be mad about that. Um, and, and that's just more for me. I basically like, but he's going to play wide receiver. He's not, I'm not saying he's Alvin Kamara. I'm not trying to say that by any means, but which, who have you fucking assholes sitting out there? <laughs> We're like Alvin Kamara is going to be Alvin Kamara. I mean, we were pretty high on him. We were high on him, but he These was assholes. he was below all of the he was below all the other running backs that were in that draft class, like it, the top running backs that were in that draft class. But he, he was, was not he was, going that far. He was it. you know one nine one ten one eight to take with him that high with um as the other guys. in that draft class for us with the Kareem Hunt and and all that kind of stuff mixed in there. Um, but well, you had to take Kareem Hunt going to the Chiefs. I mean. But I mean, you're just gonna like you're gonna say, well, he's not Alvin Kamara. Well, like just stop pretending like you knew Alvin Kamara was gonna be Alvin Kamara. If anybody has a chance <laughs> to be what Alvin statement. Kamara is, then it's, it could be Travis Etienne because he was he was that dude in fucking college, and all he's done is get better and better and better at receiving. And now, yeah, like you said, we got a very long video about just Travis Etienne, and like I, I think there's. Alvin Kamara's rookie year is a decent mirror of what could be going on. Now, maybe he doesn't have the, quite the touchdowns, but and maybe not quite the uh, maybe he doesn't have 80 receptions or whatever. But like he could have a ton of targets and, and 130, 150, 160 carries like and he's going to be explosive with those. The, the great thing about him is he doesn't need. 25 carry like a Jonathan Taylor who doesn't I'm not saying that Jonathan Taylor needs all those carries to get going but that's the type of player that he is he's going to get better with all the it, Travis is, is going to blow the doors off of you they're going to catch you sleeping and, and Urban is is a, is a offensive mind whether he makes it or not in this league the offense is probably going to be good he's going to get that guy who he decided to take in the first round into a mismatch position and if you're going to tell me that i'm going to take that talent of that guy over all of these guys where the guy who everybody was clamoring for right. over the last several <laughs> years to be oh you know you got to get etn got to get etn and now Don't trade it's here and, and you're mad picks. about it and it's basically 
he was too good for too long and I'm 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 still all in give me the Travis Etienne. Yeah. I mean he's got the strong PPR floor because because he's got an offensive minded coach and a quarterback who's down to dump it to my man cuz they're boys and it's an easy way to pick up a bunch of yards it's an easy way to get your completion percentage up and keep the sticks moving and that's all Trevor wants to do. He that's just happens all Trevor to be special wants to do. as well. And so I mean, the offensive line situation isn't great. It's not the best, but I mean, they James, are returning all five. James dudes, Robinson so that's was just fine behind that offensive line last year. You're right. Year. That's a great fucking response. Now James Robinson is there and had a and lot he of isn't attempts. Going to be had a lot of attempts. Ne- negated completely from this offense. No, I believe not. he's going to get carries, and he's good. He's a good player, but he's not there on a four year contract. That's a one. That's a great point to make there, which we've made over and over again. I'm just going to hammer it home. Restricted then, free agent next year, I believe. And then on top of that, like. If Travis Etienne didn't have any competition, you couldn't get him years, here. Actually. You couldn't get him here in the, the right. three seven. It's built in already. The, the 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 shared workload is built into the draft position. If he would have went somewhere that was calling him the workhorse, he'd be right Next near na- he'd be up in that Najee near that sophomore area, the high twos, right? Uh, and and you wouldn't be getting it. So I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna run with it and let me get it. And I think this guy's just gonna be an absolute stud. And at the end of the day. It's the 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 attributes are out of this world, but the man behind that helmet right. is a fantastic human being, and is just as a hardworking, humble, wants to get better, wants to be great kind of guy, and doesn't and want to talk about himself or any of his accolades. He doesn't care; like he just wants to win. I want to put my eggs in those kind of baskets. Right. So, um, right. And now the next guy that's on my list here, Joe Mixon, questionable character. Yeah. So you go with Mixon next. I got Mixon next. All right, um, I'm gonna go Joe Mixon next here. I have Joe Mixon on my list as well, but I can't I can't decide between him and and the next guy. So let's let's maybe talk it out a little bit. Do you have any? Are you just you feel great about Mixon here at uh? I've always felt pretty good about Mixon, and if we're talking about talent, it's right up there with just about any back in the league. Fair. We've seen it when it's out there. He's, He's been in a shitty He's situation. Sick, nasty. That, that same tweet I was referencing was trying to talk shit about how his yards per carry or some shit. I'm like, man, this man is a freak. And he's a wide receiving freak. He's a freak, man. Yeah, he's I mean, played behind shitty O lines. He's just be- played behind shitty situations and shitty. But not the best quarterback. And he's all no, serviceable, I mean, but. but Man, this Shit. is just... He gets hurt. That's the problem. That's why he's here. Right. That's why he's here. It's, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, fool me once, fool me twice things on Joe Mixon out there That's this year. That's fair. Which is fair. I'm not, I have some Joe Mixon. I'm probably not going to double down anymore. You know, I have some. I'm, I'm fine with that at this point. But last year, I was a guy arguing like, hey... In the first the, the things, round. You know, every year the board changes. Mm-hmm. So you have to be up on, you know, whys and hows and wheres. And, you know, maybe I won't be as robust, RB run. Uh, robust because the board is just not it's not playing out Be- people are using the positional scarcity wrong and I'm not comfortable with taking players like they were and last year was a, a year where by the time you got to the back of the first I didn't love any of the running backs that I could get and Joe Mixon was you know kind of the favorite guy that I could get and it, you know it didn't really work out all that great now you know started out with a 6.1 went to 12.6 had an 8.5 and then he blew up with a 42 and then a 15 and a 14 and then he was out um so started to kind of come on there and had a couple of not new, so great games new co- new head coach new right. scheme new quarterback so it's just i think their their first round pick tore their shit yeah i think it was right a second off the year, rip second year head coach but um but but rookie quarterback and just a just a shitty shittier situation. But you could see that Joe Burrow was in there and he kept them in every single game. And I feel like that's the kind of stuff that will shift the culture. They're a super young team, like you said. There, the Jonah Williams was injured. They they went back to the well. They added more. I would have liked to see them taking Penne Sewell, but they took your boy out of Clemson, Carmine. Um, and, and they came back and in the first round they added another ridiculous weapon to that offense. So now it's T. And and uh, Tyler Boyd and Chase uh, 
Chase Edmonds. Chase, uh, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase. It might be one of the best wide receiver It's, cores, it's a strong wide receiving best. core, super young, super talented. Now, Boyd's not super young, but Burrow's super young. Already shown that he has chemistry with T. Higgins. T. Higgins is going to work and get better. He's already on it. You know, Chase was outstanding with Burrow. Burrow, mm-hmm. you know, stood on the table, pounded the table, as, you know, everybody used the to talk about. Pounding Kyle should have pounded the table for him. <laughs> like, all right, Joe Burrow pounded the table for Chase Edmonds. Where are you guys at with that one? You guys going to make fun of that or not? Nah? I like, had a guy pound the table at work one time. He was typing on his keyboard. He goes, God damn it. <laughs> Slams the shit down. And I look at him. And he looks at me, and I was just like, "Yeah, I don't want to get on that guy's bad side." Didn't see it, buddy. You just you you say GD at work if you want, man. I, I'm down. Can I say it too? <laughs> so anyway, not a whole lot of competition with Mixon. He's still fairly young. The talents very strong with him personally. Don't love the character necessarily. You know, um, we all know he's an idiot. Like, but. Again, there's this weapon upgrade. They, they got on that line some more. They get Jonah Williams back. The line should be improved. Everything should be good moving forward. Um, 16.6 points per game. Obviously, the 42 blow, puts that into another hemisphere. Of, it wouldn't have been you know quite that good if you don't have a 42 on the resume. But a 12, an 8.5, a 14.2, a 15, and a 14, I'll take that. Um, and then, obviously, you had the 6.1 to start the season. But no Geo there. Uh, Geo's out to be taking some passing downs. And it seems like, you know, if Mixon can get in there and be healthy, which we haven't quite seen, which is the discounts now built in, he's, he's going to be just fine in your lineup. And I'm, I'm, I think I would put him as, as the two here. You feel, you feel great about it. What do you think? I can feel it down in my plums. So the plums may have made that decision. I don't know. I don't know if I feel it down the plums, but okay. I'm down. Let's. What about this next guy? I think I know who your next guy is. I think it's Austin Eckler for yeah, me. Yeah, got it. I think be. Eckler's the next guy. Let's pull it up. What do we got here? What do we got? Austin Eckler. There's his photo. Again, not a whole lot of competition. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and and just, just, uh, just through your boy. 10 games last season, had 16.5 points per game. Uh, when, it, when he returned in week 12, target machine, 48 targets uh, through the final like six games. Um, and everybody loves Herbert. That's so many targets. Uh, and everybody likes what they're doing moving forward. I like their head coach. Uh, they're going to be, you know, they're going to figure things out on defense, even though they've had good players there. Uh, Staley uh, was fantastic with the Rams kind of making, turning, you know, chicken shit into chicken salad. Or how's that? How's that go? Chicken before the egg? No. Cart before the horse. No, whatever. <laughs> um. <laughs> But then again, on top of all that, there's, there was some good O-line uh, improvements with Austin Eckler that I really like going on. So over ev- all everything there. seems to be pointing uh, very, very up for Austin Eckler. Now, the age, you know, not necessarily great, but he's not one of those guys who's going to be grinding crazy. So I feel he like... He does get some goal line carries. Right. I would put that in the positive area. Right. And he's also missed some time, so he's maybe lost some pounding that he could have taken on that body, maybe. Maybe, but he's not necessarily going to be in there grinding between the tackles for super long. So longevity for being a pass catcher and then being utilized right. a little more sparingly could be in his favor, but who know, who really knows there. But again, that offensive line upgrade... Well, I think is I got I got that down. Go ahead. Uh, so they made a big overhaul. Uh, they they've got four out of five new starters coming in this year. Always been a weak point over there. Yeah. So they drafted uh, Rashawn Slater with the thirteenth overall pick. Northwestern right. fella. Uh, they they got Brian Balaga coming back at right tackle, and when he's healthy, he's pr- pretty Strong. good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They picked up Corey Lindsley from the Packers center. That's Balaga, a big addition Lindsay, right there. Lindsley, both Packers at points in their careers. A little cohesion. Mm-hmm. Second time we got to use that word. Love added, Lindsley. Uh, He's fantastic. Right. So good. They added two guards and another two guards in free agency. Uh, Matt Fe- Feeler. Feeler? Feeler? That's a tough one. And then uh, Ode Abushi. Mm. You should love that name. Sure. Oh, Abushi. And PFF has him slated to be one of the most improved lines. So, yeah, yeah, done deal. But that that to me, I think all the cases with Eckler there and, and this point in the draft, PPR floor well, should be fantastic. He's and, a definition of PPR floor. Right. Average 4.5 catches a game. Like and now that. you're going to give me a, a nice OC? Addition? Sorry, I said that wrong. 5.4 catches a game last year. 
That's what he averaged. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for some sort of average to put your stamp on approval, it's 5.4 catches a game. And and to to now on top of that, you get a running back pass happy OC added to this mix. Right from the Saints. Offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi comes into town. That is amazing. Strong. It's great. What would you say that's a I, good that's case? why you I want that's a good case for what? For what? PPR floor. Oh, right, right. Exactly. And and like, I mean, that's why I want to maybe take him over Mixon. That's what I was. I just could, I couldn't get anything there. Couldn't yeah. get a, couldn't get a an answer to the layup, and then I couldn't get a meatloaf. So I'll, I'll just do it all myself. <laughs> do it all myself. So you want to take him over Mixon? <laughs> no, I mean I think I'm mixed. I, I'm I feel okay where I'm at right now. I thought you were making the sound bite because I said I would take him over Mixon. No, I was. Those just going, were the words that I took out of your mouth. This isn't my soundboard, so I had to find. Uh, you haven't. I used had to it find the meatloaf. Much. Feel there. free to touch any of these keys. Don't mm-hmm. fuck with any of these, yeah. though. Okay, you fuck with one of those. So you're thinking Eckler over Mixon? That's what I. That was the struggle that I had in saying that I want to take Mixon next after Travis Etienne. Again, should have led this conversation off like I led the sophomore running. Far be it for me to be like come out here and be like this is definitively the order that these guys need to go in. Pounding the table. Like, I mean, Jesus Christ! No, it's goddamn. <laughs> this is a this is a pretty it's a pretty tough thing to do out here, but we're 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 trying to make it happen because we know we know you guys like it. So like when I saw that tweet about Mixon getting if Mixon gets cut and I was like I didn't think about because of the contract I was like oh what did he do yeah right I don't feel that way at all about Austin Eckler right I feel more like in the Travis Etienne camp with Austin Eckler and I don't know that Mixon's going to be tied to this offense for more bald, than two years bald brethren is that is that is Eckler's bald I don't know he, he seems like he'd be a, a self Bicker, like he doesn't really need to. He just likes got a good right. shaped head. Right, likes to go with it. Doesn't want the hair maintenance. Right, that's strong. That's a decision white people, white dudes don't make. <laughs> no, <laughs> like white bald white dudes still won't even make that decision. No, they're way. just like I'm gonna Hang pretend like I have hair. Hang it on, <laughs> idiots. Ain't no way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he just. <laughs> Where the fuck were we? I don't even know. What, what? We're on Eckler <laughs> over Mixon. So let's just keep it moving. I like bald people. Is that what you're trying yeah, to give me? Yeah, that's say? what I was going with. <laughs> Larry, Larry David taught me that all of us bald people have something in common, and we need to stick together. Hey, if Larry's <laughs> not usually wrong on a societal... Uh, that's true. I don't have any Larry... I need some Larry David. Uh. <laughs> all right, so let's keep this thing moving. Uh, I got E.T. Mixon Eckler. You're you're on board. You could easily pencil Eckler above Mixon. You wishy washy back and forth. I'm not saying that I'm. I feel like I'm going to get two good years out of both of them. Yeah, I feel like Mixon's pretty young still. I mean, yeah, a, a Mixon's year a year younger, than... younger. Let's see, Mixon. I have it down here. Mixon is 25 next but... month. Right. And Austin Eckler just turned 26, so right. they're basically a year apart. Right. Um, so it feels ridiculous to 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 not even say Aaron Jones's name next, which uh, you know I just I just actually this last weekend watched the Packers Colts game from this year just because it was on when I woke up, um, and Aaron Jones was was just so strong and it feels it's just without the Aaron Rodgers thing it just it almost gives you a reason to push somebody down and when you're ranking people you kind of need some reasons to push somebody down so it just feels like almost like too easy to just keep pushing Aaron Jones down but I'm going to keep pushing him down I'm taking my guy Monty I'm surprised it took this long I'm taking my guy Monty I know you love Monty I'm surprised it took I absolutely love David Montgomery I think he's great um I know it does you know, everyone you're gonna everyone's gonna be mad at this because he's one of the favorite fantasy community guys to hate. Um, because they he just isn't him. that good. He's not good. He's not good. You have hate in your heart later now. It's like I don't know what you're watching, but this guy it, through the last two years basically averaged like one point nine and two point oh yards per touch, like before contact. Like so, he's not get like before that's like somebody's a not touching. Very many. No, that's it's that that ranks thirty eighth at one that one point nine. There's not even that many teams in the no. NFL. It's just like he was not he wasn't <laughs> getting any help. So, you know, and then at the end of this last season, something changed over those last. Well, six they had games. a terrible. Well, it must have just been the schedule. Defenses. Like, they had been they had the same shit going on the entire time, but through these six t- 
you know, they've played other teams with bad defenses through that entire time to get mm-hmm. those two terrible averages. But Bill Lazor starts calling plays. They shuffle the line around. They call some practice squad squads up and they start just running better plays. David Montgomery continues to get better because that's the kind of guy he is. And he ends the season just slaying shit, looking like a G and everybody's just mad about, but nobody wants to mention, you know, that, that JT played some of those same teams in the back half of his season and nobody wants, you know, so did several other guys, but nobody gives a shit. It's just, they got to have a reason why David Montgomery was good because he sucks. And it's like, you know what? I bet, the first rookie draft on David Montgomery, I doubled down again last season, and my guy just keeps paying off. So I'm gonna fucking triple down. Montgomery, holler at me. He was a league winner last year, like for sure. He, you mentioned those six games, but like he was good through through the first ten, and then just murdered his last six games. I think he was the RB one. Those could be straight facts. Right, and now you're going to add you don't you don't know how long Dalton's going to be in there, but you're going to add a running quarterback to this mix where the offense just should naturally get better for the running back position. Now there could be less touchdown runs effectively with just, Justin Fields because in you there. get a little Justin Fields action, but it should open things up a lot easier for David Montgomery, and he is for sure a fantastic PPR running back. He's runs great routes. He's a better pass catcher than Cohen at this point. Cohen's not even on the field yet and isn't ready. That was um, a strong blurb in favor of David Montgomery. And that would on like top put of that, a little like, bit of bad taste. Even with Cohen mind. on there and Cohen not on there, he he didn't have. I I don't have the number in front of me. I had so, it somewhere. He didn't have that many less attempts or more attempts with or without Cohen. So it doesn't fucking matter. Like well, so the the, the catches basically doubled without Cohen in there. Um, but I think he also improved as a pass right, catcher. Right, that's what, I, like that's what always, I was gonna say. We liked him out of college. We said he could catch, but he, the Eagle Scout that that's, that fucking man right. is, worked his way into being a really good pass catching back, route running, and went from out 20, of the slot. Right, went from twenty five catches on thirty five targets in two thousand nineteen to fifty four catches on sixty eight targets in twenty twenty. Now maybe. I don't think that number's going way down with Cohen. No, it's not going way down. They with need who, somebody who else have? to catch the who ball. Do right, because they don't want to give Anthony Miller any respect. Right. And Allen Robinson just crushes every fucking game. And I like, every single I like fucking Komet year. and Mooney's just fine. And they're but, searching for a tight end. Right. They and just, I think Komet's the guy, and I'm fine with drafting all the Komet. He's still really young, so who knows if he's going to put it all together right now. I mean, Cohen, they, they need some Cohen action. And there's nothing to say they both can't be on the field at the same time. And Montgomery is so good. He's going to get all the run, and he's still going to have... I mean, yeah, I would say that spell, he's still going to get about Damian 60 Williams. targets. You're going to spell Damian Williams? That's fine. Montgomery's still going to see 250 carries. like Plus 50 to 60 plus catches. Uh, easily, or, easily. Or, I, I just think this is... He's going to catch most of them. I think he's just going to get more and more involved in this offense and become better and better because he's, like you said, he's, again, the type of guy... Who is who I want on my team. He's going to grind hard. He's going to get better. He's not going to be satisfied. He's not going to rest on his laurels because he had a good season on the back half of the stretch. He's going to continue to fight and get better and learn and want to be there. And again, the Eagle Scout, like you said, right. coming out in him. Just a, just a so- solid, strong, good human being right there. Love Those that. are the kind of guys that I want on my team. Uh, and he's you've seen it in his running, just continuously getting better. If you've watched David Montgomery throughout, yeah, there were some times where he was that was my big knock on him coming out. Is sometimes he tries to do too much. I feel like he's gotten rid of too much stopping, stuttering, and do, and he's gotten rid of a lot of that. I think that led to some of the success down the stretch. And it's just like, give me David Montgomery. I'm gonna bet on my guy again. Let me get him. I I agree. He's only he just turned 24, so he's got even another year on mixing. He's they're not he's not going anywhere on the Bears for the next two years, and I like that. And then in twenty three he'll be under unrestricted free agent and he'll have just turned twenty six and be able to get another contract. So you like he, he probably won't get any higher value. Right. Because people are finally putting a little bit of respect on his name, which is like more than I ever thought would happen. But I think he can maintain it or not lose very much for like the next three plus years. Yeah, I, th- so, I think he can come right into his prime and be one and be one of the best backs in the league. The offensive line is a bit of a question mark. It certainly is, but what again? Because they what, lost both their tackles. What moving to that running quarterback does is gives Definitely. that line an automatic upgrade. They lose Charles Leno and Bobby Massey, but they draft uh, Tevin Jenkins in the second round. Hoss out of Oklahoma State. They got uh, Jermaine Fetty and Elijah mm-hmm. Wilkinson. They'll mm-hmm. compete for Free right agents. tackle. 
Uh, Cody Whitehair and James yep. Daniels will man the guard down positions. there for a while. And then they got a guy uh, entering his third year, Sam Mustafer. <laughs> it's a crazy last name. Uh, he graded out as the 29th best center last year, but he's coming into his third year. They're hoping to yeah. improve. The PFF has him ranked 27th overall as, as a line. So that's not that encouraging. Uh, but Justin Fields coming in, which maybe he doesn't start the year playing, uh, but he's definitely going to help kind of equalize that, which is what Trevor Lawrence will also do with right. Travis Etienne and, and, and the Jaguars. Once again, once Bill Lazor took over calling plays, when Nagy said, hey, I got to take some of this off my plate, David Montgomery really flourished, and, and they, when they changed up some blocking scheme and changed up, pulled, shuffled some stuff around, pulled some guys up off the practice squad, you, you saw him blossom into uh, into something great, um, and, and I think he's just going to pick right up where he left off now. Yeah, oh, I'm maybe not the best, but you get the running quarterback in there. I think that's uh, you know slight uh, the O line. Only thing from keeping him not being in that up with those sophomore running backs for me. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would imagine. I thought for sure you were gonna uh, let's pull up the draft board here. I thought you were gonna take him over Eckler and Mixon. It's not, it's not skill. It's not any of those things. It's the situation isn't the best. So I can, I can knock him down here a little bit. All right. Who's your? You got? Who you you got? Who you going with? Who do I have next? Mm Oh man, I guess I guess we got to call him up. He's it's been too. Long. We got to call Josh Jacobs up, right? You're going all the way up here with Jacobs. Did I miss someone? I mean, I mean, Ma, you you taking Monty four? Oh, I thought we were moving on. Oh, you, so you're with me with Monty four? Let me get a G. Let me think. Um, sure. All right. Yeah, I got I got Monty. Uh, after Eckler, I guess, because I just can't take Aaron Jones yet. I th- I think I would t- stop the slide on Aaron Jones and slot him here. Yeah, I had scrolled down past Aaron Jones. Might have been premature on that Josh Jacobs uh, thing, but I'm maybe, not going to maybe you could fix out, that in because we keep it real. Oh, 100. <laughs> no, I could easily take that out, but I'm going to save myself some time. Leave it in there. Admit the fault. I'm still learning this thing. It's really hard to be in the conversation and crush on these mics. And do all this shit. We're gonna figure it out. Let's bring Aaron Jones up. What do we? I, I did bring this. Up. We'll bring it back here. Aaron Jones and his and his uh, picture and some stats. <laughs> Aaron Jones is is you know the, if if Aaron Rodgers is there, I mean probably in the front of this group. But just like I said, gives you right, if, easy, if, if the Packers weren't idiots, right? If the Packers weren't dumb as shit, and they had Aaron Rodgers happy for two more years, it gives you such Aaron an easy Jones. Out. With, Aaron Rodgers for two years is worth more than all these dudes because right. he's going to score 15 plus touchdowns and crush pep points in the PPRs and also get a bunch of run like it's the trifecta. Right, gives you gives you an easy out with with bumping them down here in, in a right scenario. At this point, I don't think anybody's going to be right like now. you're such an idiot. But it's like he, he is he's fantastic and it feels terrible to bump him down here. And I've also I, I've admit like you've been the Aaron Jones guy on this podcast you said just say you love aaron jones right i was like i like him a lot just so, say you love him and i've always been you know not lukewarm i think is the best to say on aaron jones and i've I, from just he from really getting in there and watching now over the last year year and a half i can't hate on him anymore but it just again all of those factors make it easy for me to pull him down a little bit here but and rogers gonna- rogers list kind of makes him makes him his super make Aaron Jones superpower kind of go away from me. So cuz um, he has some power but he has a superpower with right. Aaron Rodgers. And 18.5 points per game, RB5 through 17 weeks played 14 games, you know. <laughs> that's fucking tough to argue with. Right. And now Jamal's taking with him. Jamal's out of there taking 119 carries and 35 targets. AJ Dillon's lurking, and I'm sure he's going to probably would you say more get more carries than that. I think it's definitely in the possibility to easily see more carries than but that. No chance better, he sees better player than Jamal targets. Williams for sure. So the, the but he's not going to see all those targets. I think he could. I think he I had see. two targets last year. Yeah, well, I mean that's because the he other didn't guy play was very there. much. Right. I he, think he could easily exceed the Jamal Williams stat line. I got faith in LaFleur, and I got faith. Oh, I mean, that's why, again, that's why you got to be down with Aaron Jones. LaFleur comes in, and, and Rodgers ascends to MVP, back to MVP form, and Aaron Jones is just a freak and, and just a stud on that offense. And it's just, but and it's. They always have a good offensive line. Granted, Aaron Rodgers definitely 
elevates, elevates everybody. But I mean, game. they have Bakhtiari and holding it down. They did lose Rick Lindsley. Wagner and Lindsley. Right. Uh, they they brought in Billy Price. He'll slide into right tackle, and then they drafted Josh Myers in the second round out of OSU to play center. Right. Highly highly touted. Uh, Center there, Billy Price, also an OSU product. The Bengals drafted a few years ago. Didn't work out for them. Um, the, so. the the Packers line is the highest ranked offensive line per PFF of all these teams we're talking about. Right again, like fifteen. I think Rodgers factors into that a little bit. Definitely, but Bakhtiari is fantastic, and they they do the Packers do a good job of always maintaining a pretty decent O line. Am I maintaining? <laughs> So I, I'm I'm gonna probably bump. That's the slide's gonna stop for Aaron Jones here, and then I would I would you know put up the josh jacobs card i'll bring it back whereas this value does seem very good on josh jacobs now well now when we're talking about that he's this far down in the tier because like you said number three in attempts everybody thinks that like oh he lost so much work and and gruden hates him like third in the league in attempts 273 attempts like now does does Kenyon take that way so i think Kenyon's pretty good Kenyon's definitely better than the two jokers they had behind him this last year but uh, all 500 of the past catching backs they brought in to try and compete with josh jacobs because they refused to throw him the ball if they threw josh jacobs the ball he would be a lot higher up in this list oh that then that's the biggest pro- like you get third down uh pass attempts basically to, to josh jacobs and it's t- you know terrible and it, it, it's Josh Jacobs is such a, that was like such a part of his game that we loved. And, and when they do throw it to him and get him in space, you see how great he is. He's such a good player. I, I, the value seems so good on Josh Jacobs, but I, you know, I got a hard time taking it in front of those guys. If you, if you, if you put Devonte Booker and Jalen Richard out there, 93 attempts, 22 attempts, my math work, that works out to 115 attempts. Um, Sure. And then 21 targets and 23 targets, so 44. Um, Nailed it. Right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think Kenyon pretty much, I think they stopped with a multiple rotation. Kenyon pretty much takes all of that. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think, I think Kenyon can be there so and effective. you don't think the attempts are... And not, and not I, I, he probably does eat into some, some Jacobs a little bit. He doesn't. He's uh, not but third. but he was also third in the fucking league. So I mean, yeah, he could eat into it a little bit. Josh Jacobs also been a little nicked up here and there. Sure. Um, but you know, the pass attempts are definitely for me what what keeps him down from being super high. Forty five targets for Jacobs last year, thirty three receptions, but twelve touchdowns. I mean, that's pretty strong. Fourth in TDs, RB eight last year, and and just being disrespected again because the disillusion that everybody hates him. I think the Josh Jacobs value is very good here. That's kind of why I was saying with the with the nuke stuff that like yeah, I kinda, you know Jacobs. I feel like is disrespected and 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 can still be very good. The where, talent where yeah is where, phenomenal. Where I you know I almost don't really have a problem with you know looking Josh Jacobs <laughs> way and and at this point the another big problem is is a, a Maybe a downgrade in the offensive line situation with oh, the Raiders. For sure. Um, I'm not really sure what they're doing. No one does. Which is no kind one, of always, again, no one likes the problem with Josh doing. Jacobs is no, like, I, nobody knows He's what the fuck. I don't he, trust the fucking Raiders. Right. And usually I like someone's contract if they're going to be there for a minute. But in this instance, it might be a little bit of a bummer because he still has two years left. And then they have a fifth-year option for 2023. Right. So he could be stuck with John Gruden for three more years. So that... Could be a bummer, although he was third in the league in carries. So right. he's he's pretty decent. You know what I mean? He's like decent to quite decent for your fantasy lineup. This right? is why I love the player. Right. And I think he could well, catch more balls. I think that's a good problem. Point. I think that's the it is the problem. And I think that's a good point because you look at RB eight and and you know, it is what it is. And he was the RB eight, but like when you have him in your lineup, there's so many sparse spots where you're like, God damn it. Jacobs was killing me, and if he didn't score those twelve touchdowns, there would be a, a you know another a big decent gap in the RB number next to his name because he doesn't get a, a ton of uh, targets, and you know it's just what the fuck are the Raiders doing? They did give him you know they got twelve touchdowns, so I mean that it's just there's there's some twos and some threes and a, and a couple of sixes and you know just i don't have the game log in front of me but i know like and from owning josh jacobs there are some times where you're like damn like the overall numbers at the end of the season look good but on the week to week sometimes is stressful for sure and and to take it back to the offensive line right 
Uh, Colton Miller's their third year left tackle. The best they would say is that he's had shown improvement in the first two seasons. Uh, they did what many would call a reach in the draft. Everyone called it a reach. They do what the Raiders do. At number 17 overall, they took right tackle uh, Alex Leatherwood out of Bama. Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, people did not like that. No, and it's just it's just like like I don't know. Maybe Leatherwood's going to be great, but it just it probably wasn't necessary, and that's what yeah. everybody hammers home and right. gets upset about. Which they've done that in the past. Uh, they they do have Richie Incognito. He didn't play last year, so they got him coming back. Hopefully, he can return to some sort of form. Although he's he's a bully. He's as old as that. Uh, <laughs> it's that uh, that news that he's a bully. Yes, yeah. like he's yeah. super. That was a long fucking yeah. time ago. He's, he's got butt. upper thirties. Yeah, um, and then they got Denzel Good. That's an uninspiring right guard play and then they traded their center Rodney Hudson Rodney away Hudson. to the Cardinals yep. uh, two and Jags will battle it out to replace Hudson Andrew James and Nick Martin Jags and they, they traded uh, just another guy Gabe uh, Jackson to the Seahawks just getting rid of guys just reaching for guys they, the they spent a ton of money on the offensive line and they, they had an okay offensive line and then maybe it didn't perform to the standard that they wanted to and now they've gone the complete opposite direction so we'll see what happens with that um, but another reason that maybe Jacobs kind of slides down here but I feel like the value is pretty good but I feel like we're properly rated here on the rankings uh, so here comes the last two it's Javante Williams and it's, and it's Miles Sanders I'm going to go ahead and put Miles Sanders last yeah let's go Javante I think Javante Williams, uh, most people would say, you know, probably higher. A lot of people would probably take him over Montgomery. A lot of people would take him over Jacobs. Hell, most, some people are taking him over ET. So maybe he's near the top of the tier for some people. I don't know if I can quite get down with that. I like the player. I like the, I like, I do actually kind of like where he's going. Um, if, but it seems like there's one, one person in every room that can elevate him higher to a point that I want to take him. Um, and then after these running backs all go, if, if he's there and, and Sanders is there, I'm probably going to take Javante Williams. Yeah, I mean, just because I just can't get behind Miles Sanders. I think I like the player better with Javante Williams. He's maybe not as athletic and electric. <clears throat> not that we've seen Miles Sanders get off that much, which maybe not be his fault, but he's – he still had. He needs to learn. You know, uh, now we need that sound bite. Uh, you know, he he needed to learn the running back position because when he came in, he was just bouncing things outside nonstop. He, he, he did get better. Bouncer. He did get better. He did, and we'll we'll talk about him in a minute. And I I don't hate that situation necessarily that he's in. And I would like to like the Broncos situation more. I think they'll have a QB upgrade. Don't know necessarily what's going on with that offensive line. Um, they graded out as the 28th worst line. Not great. Year. Uh, they do have a stud left tackle, Garrett Bowles, uh, coming off a really good year. They signed Bobby Massey from Chicago, which we just talked about, uh, to play right tackle because they released Juwan James, who opted out of 2020 towards Achilles outside Bummer of the injury. field. Um, I think they recouped all their money because he was away from the practice facility when he tore that, and it wasn't football-related. I think the Ravens signed him just to scoop him and stash him. Ravens move. Great move. Right. Uh, they returned Dalton Reisner, who's been okay in his first two years in the league. They need him to take a step forward in his third year. They got Graham Glasgow holding down right guard. And they're not sure who's going to play center. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, the third strong name there. LSU. Uh, will compete with uh, third-round rookie Quinn Miners. All right. Well, but you, it's not great. But they got studs everywhere else. But they got uh, Melvin Gordon, right? right? So it doesn't feel like it's going to be great this year. You're right. taking a bit of a discount this year, like you're in your lineup. Like you're not going to feel great. I don't think. I don't know that he's going to like Melvin Gordon is a good player and did okay for how bad that team was last year right. for them. I don't think he's going to be zero carries and whatnot like Javante's not going to be handing this role I don't believe until the following year would you agree with that I would I would also agree with that but I you know we're playing dynasty here right and I love I, I do really like the talent of this guy I right. think he is a good running back yeah like a really good running back he's never handled a, a huge load which that's what his body profiles at and that's why everyone was so quick to just take him over ET because of the weight basically until ET came into the 
pro day heavier than they thought he was going to be and still ran a 4-4. But, like, Javante's weight was like, oh, he can handle all these. But he's never had, like, you combine all his carries together, he never had as many as, like, almost any Chuba Hubbard season where he was healthy. So, like, <laughs> he doesn't have very right. many carries to his name because they had another good back over there. So I don't, there's no proof that he's carried the pudding, you know, before. <laughs> Is that, is that, do they carry pudding? I don't think so. Only Bill Cosby, huh? Yeah. All right. Um, like, they like to knock guys in college because they had too many carries. But it's like, no, that proved to me that he can handle it. Right. Javante hasn't proven to me that he can't handle it. Now, he did play linebacker his whole, year, his whole life. So maybe that, right. that prepares you to play running back. But I don't, I don't know. So there's some question marks for me with the team, the offensive line. The quarterback, the other running backs in the room. Yeah, I think I think Melvin's gonna you know hold them off from from really ascending into you know maybe eye popping numbers this year. Right, and then next year. But I, I you know I like everything that's around in Denver. I just it just seems like like I, when 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 these other guys are gone. When Josh Jacobs is gone, I'm all bummed. Monty Monty's gone, I'm bummed. Maybe there's a couple wide receivers I would take. You know, I probably would take Godwin over Javante. Uh, but then I'm, like, excited to take – I'm like, oh, there's still, like, a decent chance at a running back here left with Javante. Right. Agreed. And that's kind of – Miles Sanders. I think, that's, I think that's a decent way of putting it of, of why I'm, you know, still probably taking Javante. Younger, uh, more exciting, uh, maybe more value to the public because for, for, for a future trade for Javante or maybe he's just great – uh, you know, yeah. Well, maybe maybe he isn't a, 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 an actual workhorse necessarily that that everybody ness is pending him in to be because of the weight. But most most players at this point aren't really. But I think he could be the one A, and I think he could be very good. Um, and I just basically I'm throwing him ahead of Sanders because I just in the Sanders camp I don't necessarily trust what the hell's going on in Philadelphia right now. Now. Sanders, I just, I like, Sanders was much better with Jalen Hurts points per game wise. Well, hold on a second. We'll, we'll get to, we'll get to Miles okay. Sanders right here. Um, just one last thing with with both, I guess, Javante and Miles Sanders is like which to me. Which it's, to me, it's just coming down that I have Sanders below J- Javante for me. Like that's kind of like that's I, why I keep going level, back. To I, that. I I like Javante more than I like Miles Sanders, regardless of any situation or anything. I might like Miles Sanders situation better for one year like you pro- you might get more points out of Miles Sanders before we go That's, on to Miles Sanders yeah I don't even know about that before we go on to him these these wide receivers that are up here on the board right you got like Chase and Hopkins I already said I would take them over most of these guys Allen Robinson DJ Moore Chris Godwin Amari Cooper Brandon Ayuk Mike Evans Keenan Allen you taking Javante over all those guys uh, I would, I'm okay with pushing Sanders and 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 Javante maybe down a little bit. I like the Godwin. Um, I think I would take Allen Robinson. I would. Allen Robinson's always good. Terry McLaurin, like I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah, I missed him. Um, Sorry, Terry. Brandon Ayuk. I mean, you know, go back. I could to, take Javante over Ayuk. That's fine out of positional scarcity yeah. kind of deal here. I mean, you know, Brandon Ayuk played 12 games with Jimmy G. Um, basically started six uh, start played 12 games started six of them with jimmy g 15.4 points a game how many of those games was debo out uh debo played in seven of those games um but you know so he was like kind of the only C- guy cd plays cd plays in 16 games and five of them with dak and average 13.6 points per game so we're taking cd lamb way up here i think brandon Ayuk's like one of the best values in the draft right now sure. so that's that's tough for me to like be like oh yeah i'm not going to take him over over uh javante williams but you typically don't have to and that's kind of what by basis of mm-hmm. just about everything comes down to is Fair. you don't have to do that um so all right, well, let's. You want to take it to the last guy here, finally? Yeah, let's, go to, let's go to Miles Sanders. Oh, oh gosh. I'm going to have to edit that out. And post no, I'm keeping it real. Picture. Keeping it real here. Let's go to um, let's go. Sanders. <laughs> so, Miles Sanders last year could be completely wrong. I hate the situation. I don't mind the player. I think he's pretty good. With Jalen Hurts in there, any running back gets an upgrade. You saw it immediately take place when he took over. Um, I think there was like a full three point per game boost there. Let's Possibly see, there, there's a decent 
framework of an O-line, but a little old. And we, we're not 100% like the Eagles just in general. You thought they had it together. And it just seems like they're maybe falling apart a little bit. Um, and I just I just don't really trust what the hell's going on over there right now. Um, and I, you know, they're they're they got a whole new coaching staff, a whole new RB uh, room coach, and all that kind of stuff. They've a they new got, RB room too. They've they got, got carry on in there that they scooped up. They drafted they, they Kenny drafted G. Kenny Gainwell, um, which you know part of Miles Sanders' best attributes is is, is some of the work he can do in the passing game. Miles Sanders now doesn't need a whole lot of touches to be explosive, though, because we know that's a good attribute of his. So he can, you know, kind of kind of slay it in one play. And Jalen Hurts, I think, really helps that out. Um, but well, man, I mean, as the slide said, there's just there's too many question marks right. for me to to move him up um, above any of these guys. Like I don't know. Like his his touches did go up with Jalen Hurts. You know he averaged eighteen point three touches a game. He had thirteen targets, nine receptions. Um, you know, is Jalen Hurts going to be able to play well this year? Is it going to work for them? Are there going to be scoring opportunities? Are they going to give him enough work? The fact that the coaching staff has downplayed the idea of a third down back. Like, why are you going out there and talking shit basically about Miles Sanders? It doesn't make any sense. They're trying to be like, well, you know, he's not a third down back. We don't, we don't necessarily need a third down back. And yeah, that was always uh, like, why you got to take Sanders over, you know, and you everyone have a, you in have that a draft. He was going to be the guy, and and now there is a new coaching staff. Right, you have a Sirianni who I believe was in L.A. with Eckler and was in just with Frank Reich with Naheen Hines. So like, you know, that that kind of a of a player could be the Kenny Gainwell in that situation, which you know definitely hurts some. Well, in Eckler's situation, it was great for him. In Hines' situation, saying, JT uh, still crushed it. So JT did still crush it, but like probably not going to see the volume and isn't on in the situation. He's not going to in the offensive line because right. uh, well, they got they got they got the offensive line ranked as the second best group out of this uh, this, this yeah. There, tier there's of players there's we're some about. some old and new, and they've they've had some health concerns, and and you know we're just we're not sure of the future of what's going on with the Phillips. They were such a good offensive line for so long. Well, they're returning um, Lane Johnson at right tackle. He's been a mainstay. They got uh, Andrew Dillard, who's right. entering his third year. He struggled his rookie season and missed all of last year. And they got Brandon Brooks so returning. question mark. They got Brandon Brooks returning after missing all of 2020. Who is a stud. Right. He was graded out as the basically the highest guard in 2019. So that's, uh, they, that, that's a big return for them. Um, they also return Isaac mm, Smalo. Mm, Decent good. stab at that. Yeah. Jason Kelsey holding down the center spot. Old. Uh, did see a slight decline, but he's still one of like, still the could best be fine. centers. Yeah. yeah. Year in and year out. And then they drafted his future replacement in the second round, 37th overall, right at the top of the second with Landon Dickerson. Like that. Center out of Bama. Sure. So, I think he was banged up a good portion of. So run, decent offensive line with potential to be better. Running quarterback. Just question marks about how good that quarterback can be. Just basically and question marks about every single thing. The usage. The O line used to be good. Is it going to be good again? How, what, what's going? What's the team's identity going to be? Only twenty eight catches in twelve games. It's not a. Ton. Who's going to be? You know, I, there's just a just nailing, so many question nailing marks. Nailing knee injuries. He's not been the healthiest and, guy. And and then just what's the usage going to be like? It was sporadic under the guys who drafted him a little bit, and now there's a, a, a squad in there who. Doesn't have any real ties to him or real loyalty to him, and they've they've brought in more guys, and I just feel like it could be a little bit of a mess. But you know, I the talent of Miles Bring Sanders is, was always good. I just I think he's got to be at last of this of this group. I traded for Miles Sanders at the end of last year when Will Fuller got popped and and suspended, and and made it a Will Fuller trade and traded a bunch of other things and and smaller pieces and and did get a Miles Sanders at the end of the year and. It wasn't the best ever, but he definitely. I won the championship. He helped me win a championship, and he had some good games in there with Jalen Hurts. Um, that doesn't. That makes me feel a little bit better about the Miles Sanders, but just again moving forward with a whole new staff and organization, not, not a whole lot of loyalty to him. I, I, it just makes me put him down at the bottom here. So, still would take him over Kareem Hunt and Chris Carson, though. Probably so. All Chris right. Carson, it's tough. 
I don't even want to. We don't have enough time for that right now. But yeah, I think so How right now. How much time you got, buddy? Yeah. Let's get the hell out of here because yeah. it's been a long discussion. Whew. Longer than we meant. It's I'm uh, tired. We're like an hour and 15 minutes. So. Yeah. I'm tired. That was that was a fun process. Yeah. That's going to wrap that up. Be looking for the super flex that we're about to do. We'll talk a little quarterback draft strategy, how that goes, all those kind of things. I'm sure multiple other things with that. And the live mocks. Be on the lookout for this. Yeah. If you made it this long, man, go over and hit us up at Patreon. We got the Discord channel. We're doing mocks every week. We got a live mock on Thursday you can be a part of. And we're, we do slow mocks as well. And then we're about to, uh, we're going to do a startup. Um, that we're going to basically like share all the things that we're going to do with this startup with our patrons. Uh, we're doing an FFPC uh, startup and we're going to try to keep it as transparent as possible. May sell the team, may keep it not a hundred percent sure, but probably going to try and sell it going through the process. We're going to just kind of, you know, use that as a, uh, a lot of fodder over there of just saying what we were doing, what we were thinking, mistakes we made. Right. Uh, p- uh, one guy calling the other guy an idiot uh, and, and being mad about something. So I'm looking forward to selling a team that the three of us share because I don't really like drafting with the three of us anymore. Like you, you, we got to get two. You politic for votes. Let me get the second vote because two out of three uh, beats wins it. You know. Yeah. yeah. I, I still I still really love it. I just it's I, I like I just I just need well, we're gonna do I need super good, flex, I need so good I, communication. That's all you I always hate quarterbacks, so I don't hate quarterbacks. We'll see. It's always interesting to with that slow clock to trade back around and trade up and down, see what you can get. So we'll have fun with that. Come join us over there. If you if you're listening on the podcast, hit us with a with a five star review on, on iTunes or whatever you're listening to us on. Thanks for sticking with us on YouTube. Let me get a subby and a notey. And we'll be back next time. Peace.